Have you ever wondered what you look like when you get old? Me too. Now, with the toggle of a button, we can jump forward or back in time. I'm talking to Associate Professor Jaakko Lehtinen about the artificial intelligence techniques helping to power Adobe Photoshop's smart portrait tool. The tool lets millions of Photoshop users around the world edit elements like a person's mood, gaze, or even age. Oh. <laughs> Jaakko's research on generative modeling done with colleagues at NVIDIA is part of what makes this possible. These are AI techniques that look at large collections of images and based out of those images, they, uh, without any human supervision, they sort of distill the essence of, of what are, what's there in those pictures to come up with a recipe that allows you to draw sort of new pictures that, that have sort of the same very hard to pinpoint uh, laws and rules built into them. The same principles are behind the celebrity that doesn't exist. By training a model with thousands of photos, the technique can use what it's learned to create new faces, like all of these, totally from scratch. On real photos, the technique plays with what's already there. It's looking for your image in sort of its own internal mind and then in that representation sort of nudging towards a direction that causes changes that are usually associated with aging, like mm -hmm. for instance hair color and, and wrinkles and, mm -hmm. and then it's creating that back into, into a picture. I can actually see features that have become more pronounced. Like I see these certain lines that mm -hmm. are unfortunately already familiar to me, that it, it's working on what's actually there. Yeah. Why is it that you've set out to do this work? It is a fundamental, um, fundamental question on, on how to look at the, the complexity of the real world and sort of in an unsupervised manner, uh, sort of learning the rules at, at what's going on in the world. Richard Feynman has a famous quote that I'm paraphrasing, goes something like, uh, if I can't create it, I don't understand. Building algorithms that are actually able to, uh, by just looking at examples, start to create new things that sort of follow the same rules. So this is a fundamental building block of intelligence. And what kind of applications do you see in the future? I think these kinds of um, methods that, uh, that learn to sort of hallucinate what's out there in the world are going to be extremely important in the development of uh, computer vision and robotics. Um, when we want to build machines that, for instance, look at your house and put the dishes in the dishwasher or something like that. You know, dealing with all that complexity, having not seen your house before, maybe having seen a million of other houses, uh, will mean that it will have to have sort of a really robust idea of, of what, you know, what homes look like. Would you say uh, that our understanding of how complex the world is has actually evolved over time? Because I'm thinking back, let's say in the 60s when the Jetsons were on TV and we thought that everybody would have uh, a robot putting the dishes away, you know, in 50 years and that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. uh, is that because we just didn't understand how hard it is to do this? That's absolutely right. So computer vision is one of the oldest um, subfields of artificial intelligence. And uh, back in the day, back in the 60s uh, at, at MIT, they, they thought that, OK, now that we've invented uh, the first artificial neural networks, then it's going to be like an intern project over the summer to make the computer understand pictures of the real world. And that didn't happen. Yeah. And so it's, it's exactly the case that the complexity in the real world, we, we haven't really understood it properly until, until now.